Okay, welcome to Understanding Pressure Regulated Volume Control. In this module, we'll cover the different operational aspects of the mode, as well as review uh, some of the more common modes uh, so that you can get a better understanding of how PRVC works. Looking at some of the traditional modes, control, uh, for example, that is where the patient gets all mandatory breaths and they're unable to trigger any breaths. It's rarely used for the obvious reasons that the patient is unable to get a breath. In assist control, the patient receives mandatory breaths, but they're also able to trigger the machine and get a machine set tidal volume breath. In IMV and SIMV, they also have a set minimum rate and tidal volume. They also receive mandatory breaths, but the difference here is that when the patient goes to breathe, they can breathe spontaneously in between the machine breaths. So if you're comparing control, assist control, and IMV, SIMV, you basically will see that what differentiates the three modes is how the machine responds to their spontaneous effort. In control, the machine does not respond. In assist control, the machine responds by providing a machine set tidal volume. And in IMV and SIMV, the machine allows the person to breathe spontaneously in between the machine set breaths. You also have, uh, should notice that all three of these modes are primarily volume based. You set a tidal volume, a rate, and a flow rate, and the ventilator calculates the amount of eye time necessary to provide that tidal volume. Pressure, therefore, is variable. Uh, we also have some spontaneous modes that we commonly use, CPAP or pressure support ventilation. And in these two modes, uh, there is no uh, breaths provided, and it depends on the patient triggering the ventilator uh, all on their own. When we refer on this slide, when we refer to cycling, uh, we're talking about which factor actually terminates the inspiratory phase. And you can have a variety of different factors that uh, end inspiration. They can be volume cycle, pressure cycle, or time cycle. Most of your modern microprocessor ventilators are time cycled, and that is we set a tidal volume, a flow rate, and a respiratory rate, and the ventilator or the microprocessor calculates the maximum eye time in order to deliver those parameters. Older ventilators, like the MA1, they were truly volume cycled, and they actually employed a bellows mechanism. On this next slide, we'll see that we actually have newer modes, and some of them are referred to as dual control modes. Uh, we can have pressure limited breaths based on targeted tidal volumes, and those pressure limits are changed on a breath by breath basis to reach and maintain the targeted tidal volume. Modes such as PRVC, auto flow, or adaptive pressure ventilation are example, good examples of dual control modes. Here's an example of one of the ventilators, and uh, you can see that uh, you have your waveforms here. The one that we're actually pointing to is a flow diagram here, and you have a pressure diagram up here, and you also have a uh, volume diagram here. So we have a variety of different uh, waveforms that we can analyze, and you can see that on this ventilator, uh, you can clearly see some of the parameters here and some of the settings down here. So let's talk about, before we talk about pressure regulated volume control, let's talk about pressure control. And in pressure control, we set a preset pressure limit. Um, and the volume is variable depending on the patient's compliance and resistance. Well, there are some pros and cons of pressure control. One of the good things is that we limit the airway pressures, uh, regardless of the changes in the resistance or compliance, and thus we try to we tend to prevent damage uh, to the alveoli due to the shearing forces. So the goal here is to cap off the airway pressure so that the lungs are not exposed to high airway pressures, which we know uh, has been very well documented is that high airway pressures, typically those pressures that exceed 50 centimeters of water pressure will damage the airways. Well, one of the cons is that if the resistance rises, 
or the compliance falls in the patient's airway or chest wall, then the set pressure limit remains the same, but the delivered tidal volume falls. So what that means is that if a person starts to develop significant bronchospasm, for example, while they're in uh, pressure control, uh, their tidal volume, their delivered tidal volume will fall, their pressure limit will be capped, but since they're not getting their tidal volume, that can be very dangerous. So this is one of the downfalls of pressure control, is that in the face of increasing airway resistance, your volumes are not guaranteed. And let's take a look at how we would set some basic pressure control settings. For example, the initial settings, uh, we could set a pressure limit of 25, an eye time of 1 second, and a set rate of 12. And the question is, what is the delivered tidal volume? Well, the tidal volume is variable, obviously, depending on the person's compliance or resistance. Um, in this case, if we can get a tidal volume of 700 cc's, and a targeted saturation you know, of 98% or somewhere above 90, that would be good. However, if we did set those settings, and four hours later we looked at the, checked the ventilator, well, we would see that the pressure limit's the same, the eye time's the same, and the rate's the same. But if the tidal volume was only 400 cc's, and the oxygen saturation was only 86%, the question is what would be happening? Well obviously if you're in a pressure limited mode and your tidal volume is falling then that typically means that resistance is increasing. So you would want to be assessing for bronchospasm, pneumothorax, uh, impending ARDS, anything that would cause an increased resistance to the airway. And again this is one of the limitations to pressure control is that this could happen very rapidly and if you didn't have an alarm, a very narrow tidal volume alarm set, then you may not pick up on the, the 300 cc drop in tidal volume. You would however realize that the person is desaturating and then obviously you might relate that, hopefully you would relate that to the drop in tidal volume which would equate in a pressure mode an increase in resistance. So you can see from the last slide that pressure control is really not uh, the best mode. Uh, obviously it's better than volume control if you're concerned about capping airway pressures, but uh, the fact that the volume is not guaranteed uh, creates a large limitation for that mode. So we have pressure regulated volume control, and really it's a form of cis control ventilation. Uh, it's uh, the control breaths are ventilator initiated, however the patient can still assist the breath, and what you have is a constant pressure applied throughout inspiration, regardless of whether the breath is a controlled breath or an assisted breath. So it's like pressure control. And one of the nice things is that you typically could have improved oxygenation due to, due to, due to the deaccelerating inspiratory flow pattern, um, which is resulting of your constant pressure. What's nice about pressure regulated volume control and differentiates it from pressure control is that uh, with pressure regulated volume control, you are guaranteed a tidal volume. Uh, and this is achieved by the ventilator increasing the pressure limit to maintain the delivered tidal volume in the face of increasing resistance or compliance. Now, obviously that is to a limit. You actually set a pressure limit. And uh, once you start to reach that range, then the ventilator is going to alarm that you, you have to increase your pressure to give that same tidal volume. Or, you can look at it this way, decreasing the pressure needed to provide the same tidal volume at a lower pressure. Now this is a very important factor because in traditional pressure control, as someone's resistance or compliance started to improve, well then their delivered tidal volume increased significantly. So as they were getting better, again if you weren't attentive to the situation, their set tidal volume could go from 700, not their set tidal volume, but their tidal volume for a set pressure could go from 700 to 1,000 if their compliance got better. Pressure regulated volume control uh, combines the advantage of both volume control and pressure control into one mode. So it automatically will reduce the pressure to uh, prevent higher tidal volumes and in the same phase it will increase the pressure to try and guarantee tidal volumes within a certain limit. So as we uh, continue on with pressure regulated volume control, 
basically how the ventilator works is it adjusts the pressure from breath to breath as the patient's airway resistance and respiratory system compliance changes uh, it does that in order to deliver the set tidal volume so what you have basically is a, a ventilator or a microprocessor that is continually monitoring uh, the system compliance changes and making those adjustments the ventilator monitors each breath and compares the delivered tidal volume with the set tidal volume so it's a very simple formula if the delivered tidal volume is too low it increases the inspiratory pressure on the next breath if it's too high it decreases the pressure so this is a lot smarter than traditional pressure control because the ventilator is monitoring actually what the person is given and then adjusting the pressure accordingly so that they don't get either too high or too low of tidal volume. This uh, diagram demonstrates basically just how the ventilator uh, goes into its initial uh, phase. It has a test breath and it measures the tidal volume and then it compares uh, to the set tidal volume and depending on whether it's more or less or equal it'll adjust it either by decreasing the pressure or increasing the pressure or maintaining the same pressure. So the question is how the ventilator, how does the ventilator achieve uh, PRVC mode? Well, we just kind of showed that with that diagram, but the first, the first breath is delivered to the patient. It's a volume control breath. And what the ventilator does is it measures the plateau pressure and it uses that uh, as a basis for the next breath. Uh, the pressure is then constant during the set inspiratory time and the flow is deaccelerating. So the set tidal volume is achieved by automatic breath by breath regulation. And so what then happens is the ventilator will adjust the inspiratory pressure control level according to the mechanical properties of the airways, lungs, and thorax to the lowest possible level to guarantee the preset tidal volume. Now that's very important that you're delivering, delivering the tidal volume at the lowest possible pressure because again let me emphasize that we're very uh, aware that uh, airway pressures especially high airway pressures are very damaging to the airway so having the ventilator provide, deliver the tidal volume at the lowest possible airway pressure is uh, a very useful tool and the way the ventilator basically works is if the measured tidal volume increases above the preset uh, the pressure level decreases in steps of a maximum of three consecutive breaths until the preset tidal volume is delivered so again the microprocessor is constantly monitoring uh, the person on the ventilator and determining whether or not they're getting too much tidal volume or too, low to, lo too little tidal volume for that pressure and the ventilator has the ability within a certain range to increase pressure or decrease pressure. So I was talking about the within that certain range and you can see that the maximum allowed inspiratory pressure is basically five centimeters below the upper pressure alarm, li or alarm limit. So you do set an alarm limit, a high pressure limit, and that would actually cap the pressure. So if the person, for say, was having increased resistance or compliance, the ventilator can only increase pressure uh, up to five centimeters below this upper pressure limit. So it just wouldn't keep increasing pressure to try to give that uh, set tidal volume. And that's, an ad that's advantageous because if the person is starting to develop that much resistance, then they need to be assessed. And the duration of the inspiration obviously is determined by the respiratory rate and the IA ratio or the inspiratory time. Uh, this is a time cycle mode of ventilation. And you would know that longer inspiratory times is typically associated with improved oxygenation and lower inspiratory pressures. But on the other hand, that results in a higher risk of gas trapping and the development of intrinsic PEEP. So not really recommended for patients with COPD and what's not really recommended is the long inspiratory time because if you have a longer inspiratory time with the deaccelerating flow rates you have to be careful about uh, adding intrinsic PEEP into the system. That's PEEP that's typically not measured. So when we're looking at setting up pressure regulated volume control, 
what would be some of the common settings? Well, we would need to set a minimum respiratory rate, a targeted tidal volume, uh, somewhere around 8 milliliters per kilogram predicted. Now that could vary depending on some of the more recent research. Some institutions are using six, as low as 6 milliliters per kilogram. And we would need to set a upper pressure limit, uh, usually 35 to 40 centimeters. Uh, that's typically a safe pressure range. You, you know that we typically do not want to exceed 50 centimeters. And I ratio, in other words, a 1 to 2 or 33% I time or 1 second, etc. Something that would give you a 1 to 2 I ratio. You wouldn't want to use an inverse ratio unless you uh, really felt the need uh, to try to improve oxygenation, but we already discussed what some of the downfalls of that are. So from this point, um, we're going to uh, pause this uh, presentation and you will move on to the PRVC uh, second presentation as a continuation of this, PRVC number two.